Right, so we're moving on to question 21 now. So, we have got a polymer to start with and it wants me to draw the structure of the monomer. So, hopefully you can see that is our repeating, uh, repeating unit. So just draw it out exactly like they've shown you on the question. We've got a double bond in the middle there. Describe how HCl is removed from the waste gases. Well, HCl is of course an acidic gas, so you remove it by adding, uh, by reacting with an alkali, so you would react with an alkali, and that would remove the acidic HCl. Uh, one advantage of using polymers made from natural food, well, if it's made from a natural source, it's going to be biodegradable, so it won't hang around um, in the environment. Um, also, um, if you're using it from a natural resource, you're not using crude oil, which is a finite resource. Um, food, you can regrow so it's renewable. Okay, uh, part B then. Um, we're looking at halogeno alkanes undergoing hydrolysis. Um, and it's given me the time taken for a reaction to take place. Um, write an ionic equation involving aqueous silver nitrate for the formation of one of the precipitates. So let's do that. It um, doesn't matter which one you do, but Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous is going to give me Ag Cl solid. What do the experimental results tell you about the carbon halogen bond entries? Well, you notice that the um, chloro halogen alkane takes a half an hour, whereas the iodo only takes a few seconds. So what does it tell you? It tells me that the bond entropy decreases down the group. So the bond gets weaker. So the carbon chlorine bond is strong and the carbon iodine bond is much weaker. The reason for that is the iodine atom is much bigger, so therefore the carbon iodine uh, bond is much longer. How could the student modify the experiment so it could complete in less time? Um, well, you could warm it up. So you could heat the test tubes in a water bath. So heat test tubes in water bath. Which is how you probably did it uh, when you did it as a practical. Okay, so we've got some nice uh, pictures now of some molecules. Um, identify using the letters which are the following types. So, which are Ali? Fatic. So aliphatic is anything without a benzene ring in. So it's going to be um, E H I and J. Which are alicyclic? Well, they are aromatic. They're the ones which aren't aromatic, but in a ring. So that's going to be E H and also J. And then finally, which are aromatic, that is going to be F and also G, because you've got your benzene ring there. Right, compound I has one alkyl group. What is the general form of an alkyl group? So remember, an alkyl group is going to be something like CH3, C2H5. It's an alkane, which has lost a hydrogen. So it's going to be CnH2n plus 1. So, compound H can be prepared by an elimination reaction, and now it wants me to work out the percentage yield. So, I'm starting with 7.65 grams of compound, oh, it wants me to write an equation first of all. So, we have got um, C6H12O goes to give me C6H10 plus H2O. Move my board back. Okay, so um, now I need to work out my um, uh, moles. So they say I'm going to start with 7.65 grams of this one. So moles of J is going to equal my mass divided by my molar mass, which is 100, which gives me... Uh, 0.0765. I then work out the moles of H, which is my mass 
2.05 divided by the molar mass, which is going to be 82. That gives me 0.025. And then your percentage yield is that divided by that. So 0.025 divided by 0.0765 times 100. And that gives you 32 0.7%. Okay, describe the simple test that a student could carry out to determine the functional group in H. H has of course got a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's our old favourite, we would add bromine water, so it would be, we would add Br2 aqueous, and it would go from orange to colourless, And the bromine, we know, adds across the double bond. So you'll end up with a bromine there and a bromine there, like so.